Hello everybody, today the topic of my presentation is Power Electronics and Solar Energy. Uh, my name is Mohamed Uthman Rizwan and this is my EC492 video presentation about the research topic I have done. So a little bit about Power Electronics. Power Electronics is used anywhere where there is a need to process electrical energy. For example, it is used in your laptops when you when the power coming the, from the outlet is AC voltage the uh, inverter converts this power into a DC voltage so your batteries can be charged they're also in your uh, mobile phones and other places like uh, HVDC links that connect that connect underground from one end of the city to a different city like from Vancouver to Victoria so power electronics is everywhere and it is a topic that should be researched in more detail. So control in power electronics is a very important thing and it is done using switches, capacitors, magnetics which include inductors and transformers and control systems which are installed on a microcontroller and a DSP or a DSP basically and control system is very important because power system the input variables are always changing and the environment in which the power electronic device is is also changing therefore a control is needed to make sure the output is constant or acceptable even if the input values are changing the most important metric in power electronics is the efficiency and uh, I'll tell you more about it why is it so important. And renewable power and power electronics are highly interlinked and this is because renewable power is a highly variable source of energy and if for example it's always changing depending on the sunlight, depending on the wind speed and depending on the battery charge, it's always changing. So a power electronics devices are needed to make it turn it into a useful form of energy. The scope of power electronics. Power electronics is a very diverse field of study and it, and it requires the person to know if someone wants to excel in power electronics he needs to have skills in pretty much all of these things. Uh, the main ones are power systems, circuit theory and electronics and lastly, lastly not last but not least system and control theory. The person need to know really need to have an interest in these four things and all the other ones if he wants to understand power electronics really well. Uh, a little bit about the history of power electronics. They started when the transformer was invented in uh, late 1800s. Then uh, mercury arc rectifiers were made in 1920. They converted AC voltage into DC voltage. But they were they used vacuum tubes and very in, uh, they were very inefficient heavy and used a lot of power. In uh, 1948 BJTs were invented. They are used as switching devices in power electronics but but they are used in uh, as amplifiers in other signal processing uh, type application. B after BJT silicon control rectifiers were invented they were the ones they were rated for higher voltage and higher current rating and they they started the era of power electronics, then MOSFETs were invented, and then solar in 1982, insulated gate, bipolar transistor, IGBT were invented. They are better because they can they have they can deal with higher switching frequencies and higher power ratings, which are very desirable thing in any power electronic converter. So a little bit about solar inverter. Solar inverter is a crucial component in any photovoltaic power system. Its job is to convert DC voltage in batteries to AC voltage for household appliances. It is a purely solid state device with uh, with no moving DC machines and things like that. All it has is power electronics in it and control algorithm. New inverters are becoming increasingly advanced with extensive microprocessor based control algorithms. Uh, here is a typical hybrid photovoltaic system. What it is doing is that power is coming from photovoltaic array into a solar controller. Solar controller charges the batteries 
when the power is not produced by the battery by the photovoltaic batteries are used or connected to the inverter they convert DC voltage from batteries to AC voltage for the household Inver and you can see inver inter uh, inverter is the central component here and this is a bi-directional inverter and this is called a grid tied system because it is connected to it can supply power from an AC bus to the batteries and it can also supply power from DC bus to the loads this is a standalone photovoltaic system all it has is a photovoltaic array a charge controller to charge the batteries using maximum power point tracking and all these features and an inverter is connected to a to a set of DC DC batteries and the power from DC source is connected to the inverter and inverter supplies AC output to the AC load and sometimes the controller is combined with the inverter but as you can see this is a standalone system there is no utility or AC AC source connected anywhere uh, classification of inverters there are two types off grid and grid tied in off grid application they do not interface with the utility they convert AC power from batteries to uh, they convert AC power from the DC power in batteries they have a charge controller for PV to batteries as you can see here they have a controller to charge the batteries from photovoltaics in off grid in grid tied application they need a smart inverter that can deal with different power flows and it shuts off during emergencies which is called anti-islanding protection so as you can see if the if the line goes out and there is somebody working on this line and the photovoltaic system is still selling energy to the, the line anybody who is working here will be electrocuted so they need to be more smarter and know when to shut off and when to turn on and they are more complex because they can provide power from photovoltaics to the load and they can also provide power from a diesel generator from AC bus to the battery bank. Uh, next thing is the feature. What next features of solar inverters are maximum power point tracking (MPPT). This is a compulsory feature to maximize output of a PV system. What this does is that it provides maximum power. It it, it makes sure that the output voltage and current are kept at a point to extract maximum amount of power if the power if the if you're if you are getting the maximum amount of current the voltage will be zero and the power will be zero and if you're getting the maximum amount of voltage which is open circuit voltage the current will be zero and you'll get zero voltage so zero power output so any inverter needs a maximum power point tracker to extract the maximum amount of power from the solar cells and here you can see why we need a, a controller algorithm because the temperature is changing and, and as you can see the output curve power output curve of a photovoltaic system is, is different for different temperatures so in order to extract maximum amount of power a solar inverter can just keep running at this point because then it will extract a very little amount of power at at 25 degrees centigrade so it needs to make it needs to move the voltage so that it it needs to lower the voltage so that it extracts maximum amount of power and that's called maximum power point tracking anti-islanding protection is an, another necessary feature for all grid type photovoltaic system it shuts off power that is being fed to the utility to prevent electrocution of line workers also to prevent accidental supplying of power to neighboring houses here I want to talk about a simple inverter what this does is that uh, it's called a square wave inverter it converts DC voltage from one side to AC voltage to the other side. It is it is the least expensive and least desirable uh, inverter because the output voltage is a square wave, not a sine wave. But it's very simple, as you can see. Close the switches, get this out voltage. Close these these two switches, and you get a different polarity for the output voltage. You do that quickly. You do that continuously for each cycle, and you get a square wave AC alternating square wave but this is a this is a square wave and it doesn't have it doesn't ha it's not it has a lot of other harmonic contents in it therefore it is not desirable most of the power there is some power in a 60 hertz component but most of the power is in in other harmonics and a lot of devices will not work with this type of 
AC voltage. A better thing to do is to have a modified sine wave inverter which is basically still a square wave. The one in blue you can see it's positive and it's zero for a while and then it goes to negative for a while and the cycle continues. So green is a square wave inverter, blue is a modified sine, uh, sine wave inverter and red is a pure sine wave inverter. So the pure sine wave inverters are more expensive but they are the most desirable. This one is in the middle modified sine wave inverter and it has a lot of harmonic distortion but it can be used at some places like where motors are not involved. Pure, uh, they are better, they are modified sine wave inverters better when electric motors are not involved. They also generate a buzzing sound because of these harmonics in them as you can see. Uh, pure sine wave inverters are very efficient and they have no compatibility issues. They are little more expensive compared to modified sine wave inverters obviously because <coughs> it, it's more difficult to produce this type of pure sine wave rather than closing on and off the switches and producing a square wave or modified sine wave square wave. Uh, here is a single stage inverter which pro produces a pure sine wave. You can see it's much more complex. What it has is grid sensing a DSP control algorithm, a DC source right here, a capacitor to remove the ripples. Then it has an edge bridge which is connected to modified square wave. Here is a pure sine wave inverter. What this is doing is that uh, this edge bridge, edge bridge produces this type of voltage output but this is not the type of output we want. So what it does is that it goes to an inductor to remove the ripples then you get a pure sine wave this pure I mean not a pure sine wave but the ripples are removed and it's a much better sine wave with less ripples and it goes to a transformer to be turned into a 240 volt AC or 120 volt AC for North America solar micro inverters is a new form of technology which is basically right here it is connecting a lot more inverters to each photovoltaic panel and then they are connected in parallel so instead of using one central inverter right here you have lots of inverters they are connected in parallel and putting their power different amount of power and the power combines and it's used wherever you want to use so the why they are needed is because traditional solar converter systems have a tendency that output power is severely impeded when output of one or more cell goes down The traditional solar converter system have a tendency that output power is severely impeded when output of one or more cell goes down. Microinverters are the current solution because each panel is connected to an inverter, to an inverter, and multiple inverters are connected in parallel. Shading of one panel does not affect other panels because each inverter has its own maximum power point tracking and it extracts the maximum amount of power from each panel and it just combines it to the AC bus. This boost, this boosts output power and reliability. Uh, it also increases efficiency by having a high output voltage, so that the wires which are used here they can be smaller because higher voltage, less current, and you can use a thinner wire to connect all these photo photovoltaic panels. It is more scalable and modular because let's say you start with just one inverter in a photovoltaic system panel, <coughs> but then you want to you want to put a different inverter at a different place in a house. You can just connect a photovoltaic cell which is getting different amount of sunlight and connect it to an inverter which is connected to the AC bus. So this is more scalable and modular and the power of microinverter is low 100 of watts resulting in low internal temperature and longer service life. They also optimize energy utilization. They are more expensive in the startup because because you have to buy a lot more inverters but in the long run it's it pays off because they have longer service life they, they, they give more power from each panel and they are just easy to use and more scalable and this is a this is one example of a company that sells micro inverters you can see their size is pretty small and they just go back on the back panel of a photovoltaic panel 
uh, I will just want to talk about lastly about the efficiency of inverter and why is it important converters need to have a high efficiency if not then large amount of power will be wasted as heat and converter will need to operate at very low output power because otherwise a lot of heat will be generated and things will start to burn out, burn out. so an inverter needs to operate at lower power output which is not a desirable thing to do and they will need bigger components so that they can handle the heat and the power they are generating an expensive cooling system to get rid of the amount of heat that they are generating so efficiency is defined as power out over power in power loss is power in minus power out and then here you can see if efficiency is 50% power loss is equal to power out right here if efficiency is 50% 50% power out is almost equal to power loss over power out is equal to 1 which means that power loss is equal to power out so if you have an inverter which is a 10 kilowatt inverter you will be losing 10 kilowatts of power as heat so imagine the amount of cooling and all these things and the rating of the of the components that one will need so if an inverter is highly efficient you can be pretty assured that it is a nicely engineered uh, inverter or a power electronic converter uh, here's the end of my presentation hope you learned something about this about power electronics especially about inverters and thank you for your time